Good morning, everyone. This is John L. Welsh, Dean of Student Services, and I have in our room Stephen O'Donovan, our Associate uh, Registrar, and well, the Associate Dean for Admissions, Registration, and Records, and Dr. Robin Garrett, who uh, will be doing the presentation. She's our Deputy Chancellor for Academic and Student Success. And we have Karen DeWeese, who's driving the PowerPoint slide. Uh, Dr. Garrett is going to provide an overview of the Texas Pathways. This is the first of four sessions that she's going to be doing uh, over the next three months. Um, and so we will get started right at about 7.35. Okay, thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, as Dr. Welsh said a few minutes ago, I'm, I'm Dr. Robin Garrett. I'm the Deputy Chancellor of Academic and Student Success. And I'm here to give you a little overview of the Texas Guided Pathways Project that the state has um, put in place. And this is an initiative <clears throat> that is run by the Texas Success Center, which is a division of TAC, the Texas Association of Community Colleges. TAC, and the membership of TAC, are all of the community college presidents and chancellors. And our chancellor, Chancellor Yiannopoulos, is a member of that and he fully supports Texas Guided Pathways. So I'm not going rogue on us here. We're, we're doing something that is blessed by our chancellor. Um, what is Guided Pathways? Well, in the past, um, there was such a focus on enrollment, getting students in, getting students in, getting students in, across the state. Every, all institutions were focused on enrollment. Now the focus is on completion and success and helping students achieve their goals. And that's the crux of Texas Guided Pathways. It provides all students with a set of clear course-taking patterns or pathways that promotes better enrollment decisions. So that's where we come in, helping them to make the right decisions of what to take and prepare students for future success. And, that, and to do that, we integrate support services that make it easier for students to get the help they need during every step of their journey with us at CTC. So that is what Guided Pathways is about. And it's about taking a look at our processes and our procedures and what we do to help students reach their goals. So within Guided Pathways are four pillars. And we say, yeah, well, we do all of these. And we do, but we have to make a concerted effort to enhance our processes. We have to clarify the path for our students and have clear curricular pathways from their high schools all the way through employment. We have to help them enter the path, make a decision as to what path they truly want to be on, and to stay on the path. And that takes into that, that's all part of our student success teams and our advising and all our processes to help them stay on the path. And then we have to ensure that they're learning things while they're in our, our uh, care while they're taking classes with us. We have to make sure that what they're learning is applicable to what they need to do when they get into the workforce or transfer to a university. <clears throat> so let's just talk about what we're doing real quick and what we're doing and what we plan to do and what we're working on to meet these four pillars. Well, when we're clarifying the path, we're, we're creating our clear degree plan. And uh, the departments have been working on that diligently for the past few years to ensure that the degree plans align well with universities and that they include the fields of study. The statewide fields of study is an amazing opportunity if we implement those for students to take classes with us that are guaranteed, if they're under a field of study program, to transfer to any state university. So by incorporating that, we've established complete transfer maps and expanded those pathways to universities and that will help our students achieve their goals. This, this works from eighth grade all the way through the bachelor's to their workforce. And another area that we're really focused on and we want to enhance is our adult ed and continuing education paths to certificates and degrees within our institution. So when, they're, when we're trying to get them to enter the path, Obviously, again, our transfer maps are so important because if they know that they want to go to a university, we want to be sure that what they take here at CTC applies to their future goals of moving on. And if we don't have those transfer maps in place, 
the students won't know what they need to take here, or they may take too many credits that don't necessarily apply to their program at the university they choose. Our departmental web pages from the departments are so important to help our students clarify and understand where they want to be and what they want to do so that they know what path to take. And then one of the things that um, the departments as well as uh, the Julie in the student success area is working on it are on the orientations. The career cluster breakout sessions. We had one last orientation for the healthcare area and it was so successful that at our next orientation we'll have a, a, a bunch of the career clusters and hopefully we'll have even more at every orientation. That's when the student will really make a good, clear decision as to what path they want to be on or possibly can change their mind from their original path where they find out that, oh my goodness, I will have to play with the life. So they might go somewhere else. <laughs> or not go somewhere else, take a different path. They will stay with us. They will stay with us. <laughs> so how do we keep them staying on the path? Well, we are working on many, 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 many projects throughout this institution that help students stay on the path from our referral system and our retention alert our student success teams, um, online student orientation. We think, well, what about orientation? That should be getting them on the path, not staying on the path. Well, this was a great initiative that the student success area put in place because when they get those orient online orientations up, it's going to be a resource. So when they walk out of orientation, a regular face-to-face -face orientation, there's so much information given to them they don't remember half of it, or a third of it, or even a quarter of it. And then go back and review and see specific topics in the online student orientation at any time. So that will help them stay on the path. Our emergency aid and food pantry. There's so many um, students that leave us because of personal uh, problems or instances that maybe we can help them with. <clears throat> and there's many, many other uh, initiatives that we have in place, and we'll talk more about these when we do the specific uh, pillar uh, presentations in the next few weeks. Ensuring learning. When, when you look at that pillar on the surface, you think, well, that that's only has to do with the faculty. That's only what goes on in the classroom. But that's not necessarily true. Our tutoring services help students ensure that we ensure that students are learning. And our library services, we, we need to keep looking at all of these services and expanding them and helping students to achieve the data or get the information, not the data, get the information they need to achieve their goals. So whose responsibility is Texas Pathway? Well, everyone at Central Texas College is part of the Texas Pathways Initiative. Whether you knew it or not, you're all part of it. And as well as our ISD partners and our university partners. Because a student from the school district come through us and we have to help them choose their path, stay on the path, and move to a university. However, we do have a focus team that looks and works with Texas Pathways directly and that is the Institutional Action Council, IAC. But without two leaders of this program, Ellen Falkenstein and Anelia Fairfield, we would not be where we are today. When we started with Texas Pathways, <clears throat> we were placed in Cadre 3, which is at the bottom, there's a Cadre 4, but Cadre 3 is, was still at the learning process, learning what to do with Texas Pathways. These two people, Ellen and Anelia, brought us all the way to Cadre 1. We skipped Cadre 2 from the work that they did and what they brought to this institution leading the Texas Pathways Initiative. So my hat goes off to these two ladies. They did a great job and the Institutional Action Council supported them. And we hope that everybody at this institution will continue to support Texas Pathways. So how does Texas Pathways align with the state goal of 60 by 30 TX? Well, <clears throat> The state goal has an overarching goal that by 2030, at least 60% of Texans aged 25 to 34 will have a certificate or a degree. So they're looking to the year 2030, so keep that in mind. So CTC decided, looking at our data, that we could project 
that we should have 3,300 graduates in the year 2030 of certificates or a degree. So we made that projection before 2018. Well, look, we went down. From 2017 to 2018, we went down our statewide numbers from 2413 to 2255. So we have a little bit of work to do to get to our goal of 3,300. The Central Texas region itself is expected to reach 100,000, close to 100,000 graduates in the year 2030. And that's to help us reach the completion goal of 550,000 students in 2030 will receive a certificate, associate, bachelor's, or master's degree from an institution in Texas. So that the Central Texas region needs to meet about, mm, I guess, about a fifth of that 550,000 goal. Each institution, when they submitted their projected goals, only totaled to 69,217. That's well short of the 100,000, the 99,887 that the state wants us to do. So we really need to work hard to meet these goals. But each of these goals is directly related to pathways. And the state is hoping that Texas Pathways will put us over the mountaintop that we're trying to reach and surpass the 550,000 students that year that will get the certificate, associate or bachelor, master's degree in the year 2030. <clears throat> and our CTC strategic plan really aligns well with Texas Pathways. Priority one, enhance student success. Well, isn't that Texas Pathways? It's all about student success. Goal 1.1 was increased completion rates for certificate and degree seeking students. That is Texas Pathways and that is the 60 by 30 TX state uh, mandated goals. And goal 1.2, enhance services and processes to promote student success. Well, that also is Texas Pathways. We're supposed to look at our processes, which we've done for the past few years, and we've made many, many enhancements to what we're doing to promote student success. And our priority three is continuous assessment and improvement of operations and services. Again, that aligns with goal 1.1 to enhance our services. So within priority three, goal 3.2 is decreased barriers to enrollment. And I added and completion. Because it's not, again, it's again, it's not all about enrollment, it's about student completion. Many of you might not know this, but yes, we do, uh, the institution does get funds as we enroll students, but the institution gets a lot of money when our students complete. And that should be our main goal, not only for the money that the institution gets, but for the success of our students and the alumni association, everything else that comes along with having successful students at the end of their tenure here at CTC. So statewide, what are the goals for pathways? Well, develop clear pathways for each and every student. And that's where our student success teams and our advising teams and everything else come into play. We need to continuously advise and support students. Our students have changed over the years. It's not a matter of, of giving them a degree plan, setting them on a path, and sending them on the way. And this was difficult for me because that, that was my, my mindset. And I had to change that with the help of Dr. Welch and Dean Starkey, um, that students really need help along the way. They really need intrusive advising. We have to look at the time it takes us to get to a degree. Um, it shouldn't take more than two years for a, a student to get a two-year degree when they're going full-time. And that, that's not the case, typically. It's, it's three to five to seven years. And we need to look at that. And reduce the number of credits acquired. It's a 60 credit hour degree. Why are students having to take 80 credit hours to achieve that degree? CTC is pretty good. We're in the mid 70s. So let's just say that we're at 75. The average student takes 75 credits to get a 60 credit hour degree. That's 15 more credits than they need. That's a whole semester. Our students need to be able to complete their degrees in 60 semester credit hours. So that's the work that we have to do on this Texas pathway. <clears throat> so we have to embrace this. And um, this is a pretty good quote from Socrates. The secret of change is to focus all your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. We need to reconsider our long-held beliefs of what students do, what students need. We need to have a deliberate culture change. And we need to evolve all our policies and practices to align around student success. 
And all of those little things that we hear, we've done this this way for 40 years, and this is how we've already done it. We've tried it, and it didn't work. But the, the, this one came out of the Texas Success Center that somebody said, and I hope it wasn't us, this is why we give unofficial data. <laughs> That's pretty bad. But anyway, uh, we just need to look at our, our policies, and we need to be sure, and our procedures, that we, we need to be sure that we uh, focus on what we can do to enhance our students' lives when they're at CTC and help them reach their goals. So the people that are involved with the Institutional Action Council are on this list, and they are members. And if you have any questions about Texas Pathways, each and every one of them are fully versed in Texas Pathways and are more, will be more than willing to give you more information. And then um, I will be doing two more, at least two more WebExes on the pillars. I think I'm going to do two pillars on January 22nd and two more pillars on February 12th. But March 3rd is the big day. We're going to have a live meeting of all of the student success teams. That includes advising, student success and persistence, faculty that are part of the, the teams, because each student is being assigned a student success team. Um, a student may have, depending on where they are, a developmental uh, faculty member. They may have a disability support services member. It depends on where the student is in their life with CTC. So we're going to have a big meeting of all these student success teams and kick it off and, and talk about what it takes to have our students achieve their goals. So thank you very much. And uh, if there's any questions, please type them into the chat box. Let's get our students successful. If you have them on your phone, you can go ahead and chat in. Otherwise, you can type in your question. While we're waiting for that, you know, another thing that we really should do is to come in the student session, even if it's different from what we've always done. Kind of on my embracing slide there. Just as our students change, our process to help them to get to completion also have to change. And as we know, the millennials, Gen X's, Gen Y's, all of these, these uh, areas, the students have, have changed and what their expectations are and how we need to serve them has changed. I was trying to unmute someone. Oh. They kept reading it back. So oh. I'm not going to play anymore. Right. We appreciate everyone for joining us today, and we'll be back with you on January 22. We'll have our normally scheduled WebEx on January 10th, presented by Mr. O'Donovan and the department. Mm -hmm. yes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to everyone.